some really nice squash in here, especially our butternut this year. Well, this garden definitely doesn't look like it did just a few short weeks ago, and that's because our community garden season is coming to an end as I bump along here, driving over to our little plot. Guten gardening, everybody. We only have four days left before the community garden is closed down, and I need to get out here and harvest our winter squash. So I'm gonna walk you through that harvest and talk a little bit about our community garden this season and some of the changes we made and some of the amount of time that we spent out here. Let's go ahead and get started with our winter squash harvest. Well, first you can see the plants themselves for the most part have died back. And what I have left out here is our winter squash just pretty much lying everywhere. It's gonna be a pretty easy harvest this season. You know, last season when I came out here, there were weeds so spread around that it was hard to even locate where our squash were. This season, because we put down all of this black plastic in here, we actually didn't have a problem. Well, really, I mean, right there in the middle, that's the most weeds that I see out here, but it really helped to keep the weeds down. And that's important because in terms of the amount of time we were able to spend out here this season with all of our travels and everything else, it was minimal. But one thing I can tell you is that a lot of our squash this season, and not all of it, and this is the butternut squash here, but a good bit of it seems to be a fair amount smaller than it's been in years past. And I don't think it's actually gonna require a ton of speculation as to why. Actually, I do think there are a couple of different reasons, but one of them would be that at the height of our growing season here is when we were gone, the height of when I think these really needed watering as the plants, as the fruit were coming on, we weren't around. So what I would call those really essential developmental stages of these squash, since we weren't here, we couldn't really water them at the time that they needed them. And we had a dry spell right about that time. So while I'm seeing quite a few squash out here, overall, I mean, fewer, bigger squash could be ideal. Uh, I guess the other way to look at this though is a lot of times for one of those really big butternut squash, when you cut it down, you get the neck off of there, you, you get that top part, maybe you have some left over. It's gonna sit for a day or two unless you're putting it in the fridge, cutting it all down at once. Here, we're probably gonna be using each of these as like a, a family size, just one squash per meal. So we're using the whole squash at one time. So maybe that's a positive way to look at that piece. You know, but the other thing, the, the plastic helps to hold the moisture in as the plants are growing. So that's true, but you know, even though I have nice big holes around where the plants are planted, uh, I guess the question I have is, is it preventing moisture from other areas of you know reaching these plants, making them grow a little bit more easily? So it definitely kept the weeds down. That's fantastic. But did it prevent us from getting some of the results that we would have liked? Although to be fair, these are still really, really beautiful butternut squash. And as I said, I got plenty of them. Plenty of them this size. You know, actually, funny enough, I do still have a bunch of butternut squash. Well, not a bunch. I'd say three maybe left over from last season that we're still eating off of. And that's definitely one of the reasons why we grow so many butternut squash. They last for quite some time. Not all varieties are created equal in that regard. I would say the kabocha squash, um, I don't know so much about acorn squash, but certainly the sugar pumpkins, they don't last nearly as long, but our butternut squash, our Canada crookneck, our early autumn hybrid, I'm gonna show you one of those right now. They have some real longevity and storing, and that's just keeping them in our pantry. So it's not even some sort of special placement, um, you know, for those squash. They just, they just last that long. Actually, our early autumn hybrid, here, I'll pull uh, the mature one off of here. Looks like the other ones didn't quite make it as mature. This is what it looks like right here. You got some of the, the greens and the, it looks like a cross between a butternut squash and something else. But there's a whole bunch of them in here that didn't ripen up all the way. We'll see. The plant itself was pretty prolific. We'll have to see how these taste. Again, I don't have time to, to leave these out here, nor do I have the inclination because what we know is that the garden's gonna close in a couple days and we're getting some freezing temperatures here in a couple days as well. Let me go ahead and grab my Canada Crookneck off here as well. You know, in terms of 
this season, this growing season there. That's, that's really nice. I love the Canada Crook next to great taste. A lot of meat here. You know, in terms of our time out here, I would say, I don't think a garden can be set it and forget it completely. Maybe our roof stout beds a little bit more so. But the whole purpose of our setup this year was knowing we were gonna be gone a lot and to minimize the amount of time we needed to be out here because of other time constraints and other responsibilities. And so when I say we weren't here very often, I came out a couple of times to cut down the weeds around the exterior. I came out a few times to water when I could, but for the most part, this had to exist on its own. So I already know we had a nice corn harvest from this garden. And I'll say on top of that, that we're getting a lot of squash out here. I do wish I had been able to spend, you know, a little bit more time out here, especially early on. But to be honest, there is no part of me that would have given up any of our trips, our time away this summer. There's no part of me that would give that up. Those experiences are gonna last a lifetime, especially for our kids. I think it's something they're gonna remember. So if I'm guessing at this point, I'm gonna say that we're still gonna get a large amount of winter squash out of here. I can see some hiding over there. I, oh, I see a delicata over there. I'm gonna have to get to. We're gonna get a decent amount. It may not be quite on the level of last season. Though I am already filling up our wheelbarrow pretty nicely and I still got tons out here. Let me go over here and grab this delicata out of here. I don't actually see, oh, what's that? I almost knelt down on one of our butternuts right here. I'll move that. <laughs> I don't see a ton of delicata in here. There we go. It's a smaller delicata. Man, the aerial traffic today over this area. Um, yeah, there you go. It's a smaller delicata. It's one of my personal favorites. I actually did a video where we talked about the different varieties of squash that we were growing and the different tastes, and I, I did a ranking of them. But delicata is right up there. I love, love these delicata. I like to eat these with the skin on. Skin's really good. You know, one thing I also noticed this season, and maybe you can confirm if you saw this to be true where you're growing, there were way more cucumber beetles on these plants this season, way more than I was, you know, that I've seen out here in the past. We noticed that at home as well. And I remember thinking to myself, hmm, I wonder what that's gonna do to our plants. Again, we're still looking at plentiful production, but more pests this season in that regard. Now, if you're looking for videos on knowing when to harvest or how to cure your winter squash, we actually have content on that that we have. I, I will actually put a link to that in the description of this video because winter squash is definitely different. I'm just trying to find the hidden ones here. Definitely different than summer squash. So I'll put a link to that in the description so you can have access to those videos. All right, I'm gonna harvest this last butternut here and then I'm going to show you what we ended up pulling out of here, which I actually think is still pretty impressive. That's a whole wheelbarrow full of winter squash, well over 100 pounds there. And, you know, some of it's not as ripe as I'd like. We'll let it cure a little bit. It might not be as sweet as some of the other, but some really nice squash in here, especially our butternut this year. Well, this has been an interesting experience and an interesting experiment. Again, this is definitely the least amount of time that we've been able to spend out here growing our food. I want to up that next season. I do like what the plastic did, especially with the corn. And so one thing I might adjust for next season, just to experiment around a little bit more, is to still put the plastic down for the corn to keep those weeds down and maybe not put the plastic down or be a little bit more generous with the spacing of the plastic uh, with regard to our winter squash. I don't want anything to negatively impact the water getting in there, but our corn seemed to do just fine. So maybe that's one adjustment we'll make. But again, I think it also comes back to getting out here a little bit more frequently, making sure we're getting good watering in at the appropriate time. I don't necessarily think that every single year we're gonna be able to take some trip to Europe and some trip through Canada. By the way, if you haven't checked out the videos of our garden tours there or of Hickory Croft Farm. We did a couple of videos with them up in Canada. You should check those out because those were, again, very worthwhile. Well, next steps for me, very simple. I need to get this stuff home. But before I do that, I'm going to go ahead and take down the fencing, get that all wrapped up. We're going to store that here this season. It's free storage. 
I'm gonna go ahead and pull up all this plastic. I'm not leaving anything because here in a couple of weeks, in a week and a half or so from now, they're gonna be spread, they're gonna till this all and they're gonna go ahead and spread the compost that they put down every year. And then we'll open this up again next season with a few changes, maybe some different vegetables in here and certainly uh, a few little adjustments to plastic, etc. Now, this has been an interesting season. This is a season of experimentation here at the community garden. We know we can definitely grow bigger squash than what we grew this year. So that's where some of those adjustments come into play. Hey, I hope you enjoyed today's video. If you enjoyed today's community garden harvest video, don't forget to give us a like, leave us a comment, remember to share and subscribe, and most importantly, remember, if you're with us, you are grow.